What's happening guys? Aaron here with AV Astronomy. Good evening. So today we are going to be doing a really cool tutorial. I've had a lot of comments in my videos mentioning Photokimi's Star Tools. Not to be confused with Star Tools, the software. This is a plugin actually for Photoshop. And I went ahead and checked it out online. It's only like 18 US dollars for the for the plugin, so I thought it'd be worth a shot. So Let's go inside here and check out this thing and, and see how it performs, see if it's worth the money. Alright guys, so we've got Photoshop loaded here and I'm going to put a link in the description to that Photokimi Star Tools so you can download it. Again, it's like it equates to about 18 US dollars. Pretty cheap considering what this thing can do. So if you want, go ahead and download that and I'll also provide a link to this image so you can follow along. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so what we have here is a stacked image of IC410, the Tadpole Nebula. And I'm just going to use this action set to do this, just to demonstrate what it can do. Okay, and we'll compare it to uh, the same image that I've edited previously using my own techniques and manually stretching and everything, that sort of thing. So let's get started. Now, just a little disclaimer, I've just started using this program, so I'm sure this plugin, sorry, I've just started using this plugin, so I'm not completely familiar or acquainted with all of the actions that are in here, but I've used enough of them now playing around with it for a couple of images to see how powerful it is. So check this out. You can do an auto stretch, but I have found that the level stretch just does a better job. And you literally just click play, and all you're going to do is set your gray point, your Y point, and your black point a couple times. It does the rest for you. So the idea here is, if, there, if you're new to this, uh, all of this in the histogram, this, this white area, that's your data. Okay, Even some of this down here is your data too. You don't want to clip any of that data. So you want to make, you want to make sure these markers are in the outermost uh, region or the outlier on the outside of where that data is. Okay. That looks pretty good there. We don't need to make an adjustment. So hit OK. Continue. Set black point. Now here you can see this needs to be moved over. And you notice as you watch your data come back. Move it back to where that data begins. Right about there. Hit OK. Set white point. Let's drag that back there so we don't clip any of the data on that end. Hit OK. Set gray point again. Here we've clipped some of the gray so we want to bring that back. That's right in this area right in here. Okay, and hit okay. Black point one more time. And just for this set, this part of it, we're gonna, we don't wanna clip any of it, so we're just gonna pull it right out to about here. And then hit okay. Boom. And there you go. That is the first initial stretch, which is pretty impressive for an automated stretch. That's pretty darn good. Um, now, you can already see that green that needs to be pulled out. From what I understand, there's an additional for additional like five, six, seven dollars, you can download additional plugin actions for this. Um, that includes a green removal, kind of like Asta La Vista green. But I'll just do it the manual way. That'll be the only thing I do on here manually, since I don't have that action in here. And if you guys have seen my other tutorials, you know, Control J, duplicate the layer, go into Image, well, first select the main image here that you're going to subtract this data from. Actually, first thing you're going to do is convert this into a static image of that green. And you do that. In this situation where most of it is green, the best thing I think to do is to go to Filter, 
blur, and average. It averages all the data, and boom, there it is. And you just click on the bottom layer right here, go to Image, Apply Image, and you're going to change this to Level Stretch Copy because that's what you're going to subtract from the uh, this layer here. I do an offset of 25. That seems to work pretty well for me. You can change that if you want and to your liking, but that seems to work well for me. Hit OK, and if you uncheck this, you can see, boom, all of that green is gone. So let's delete that layer. Drag it to the trash can. There we go. All right, we got a gradient issue. Now, gradient exterminator is not part of the Photo Kimmy Star Tools. However, it's, it's one I've used always in my workflow, and I still would use it in this one as well. So if you don't have gradient exterminator, that's another plug-in well worth the money I promise you if you're using Photoshop for image processing you won't stop using it it does such a good job of removing gradients so just go to filter RC Astro gradient exterminator I usually do medium medium but you can play around with the aggressiveness on this to your liking boom gradients are gone now the next thing I would do on here is just tinker around. It probably needs another stretch, but let's boost some of that color back in. So let's go to Color Boost Low. Yep, hit OK. And you can play around with the sliders here, but we're just going to leave them at the default settings for the sake of the tutorial. And I'm just hitting Enter through these different settings here. OK, OK and let's compare the two and rename layer all right let's look at this oh yeah you can definitely see it i'll zoom in so you guys can see this color change there's before there's after nice nice little color boost there all right now let's do the nebula filter and this should help bring out the nebula and punch that through so let's just hit enter we're just going to let this action run and do its thing Enter, enter. Yep, here we go. Should be about halfway done. Now you can run this so that it does it automatically, but sometimes my system crashes because I guess it's just too much at one time going on. I'm not sure why it crashes, but when I do it manual, not manually, but when I slow it down like this, it tends to perform better. All right, so there was a little nebula boost on that one. Let's try another stretch. Let's go back up. I know it can get a little, here we go. All right. <clears throat> Let's do a level stretch. Hit OK, and let's just enter our way through this. That was a luminant stretch. It just brightened the image a little bit. Here's a little before and after. You see that? It just brightens the overall image a little bit. And let's do a level stretch one more time. Same thing as before, set the gray point, adjust the slider appropriately, hit enter, adjust that black point so you're not clipping any of that data, enter again, white point just to where the data begins, right there, okay? You don't want to go into this area where there's no data. If you don't see any white, there's no data there. Gray point again, let's slide that back over, there we go, continue to black point little more boom there we go so here's a before and after look at that nice all right let's keep going with this thing so we've done a couple clicks here we've probably spent about seven or eight minutes I think um, we can do a star reduction so let's do that star reduction special and let's just click through that action there 
it's so easy guys I'm telling you if you're just coming into this new and you want something that's gonna just be pretty much fully automated for giving you some solid results and processing your images this is tough to beat I've been really pleased with what I've seen with this so far I'm, I'm literally just hitting enter entering my way through this <coughs> And I'm not making any adjustments. I'm just letting it do. There we go. Now let's do the before and after. So it just dimmed those stars a little bit. And you can do multiple iterations of this to get it to where you want. Let's look at another command in here. There was another action for Nebula called Nebula Filter Strong. Let's see what that does. See if this really makes that nebula pop that much more. Let's give it a whirl. All right, here we go. I mean, you could literally get your kid or something to do this and <laughs> process your image for you. Too easy. But let's see how the end result comes. So it did a star reduction. It's running through some high passes, thresholds. Stuff that would normally take you a lot of time to do all this manually. All these separate actions manually. And we're still trucking on. Okay, just black point. Black point looks pretty good. And here we go again. It's still running. This is a really long action, guys. It's still running through it, but so far so good. I'd actually have to fast forward through this part. Click, click, click. Wow. So it looks like it's doing multiple iterations of the same sequence here. <clears throat> to really make that nebula pop. And again, guys, there's nothing else I'm doing here other than just pressing the enter key through all these different automated actions here. All right, so just the black point. Let's slide that over a tad. There we go. This nebula is starting to really pop. And just levels a little bit right there again we don't want to clip any data so we're going to move this slider on the left over so that it's not clipping this data because see if you go here you see what happens you start clipping data just the, the picture just disappears so you don't want to clip any data okay hit okay copy wow Okay. All right. Let's see what happened here. Oh, wow. Check that out. Look at that. Before, after. I mean, it's just night and day. It really made that nebula pop. That was awesome. All right. Let's flatten all this out. Because it uses up a lot of RAM the more layers you're working with. And I've only got like 16. But anyway. Let's see what else we can do here. Let's reduce. Let's take a look at the noise. It's a pretty clean data overall, but we can do uh, some noise reduction. There's some background noise reduction action here. Okay. Should be a relatively quick action. And 
there we go. Cool. All right, so that reduced some noise there. Color noise really doesn't look all that bad. And guys, this has taken all of like 10, 12 minutes to do this. And all I've had to do is just click these actions, hit OK. And there's so much more here. Dark details, soft, reduce star bloating. We could run another reduce star special to reduce the stars. These halos here, to be totally fair, this particular image, when I did it manually, I used StarNet to remove the stars and edit it that way. And I imagine this program coupled with StarNet would be a, this, I imagine that this plugin coupled with StarNet would be a very powerful duo. You get some really good results, but I'm really pleased with what I'm seeing with this so far. Really am. Um, you know, honestly, let's look at this here. You've got sharpen stars, enhance star color to kind of boost your star color a bit. Star color is actually not bad, but you could run that a couple of iterations to get good star color. But just, just look at what we got here. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. That's pretty awesome. And that was just with a handful of actions. No prior knowledge of Photoshop. No prior knowledge of how to process these images. So, and listen, this is, I'm not getting endorsed or paid to support Photo Kimmy's star tools here. I just tried it out on a whim because people keep bringing it up in the comment section to try it. And I can see why. This is a really good plug-in set. And I will definitely be using this in my workflow going forward. Um, yeah, this is awesome, but yeah, that's, uh, that's about it guys. That's all I'm going to run through with this. There's a ton, there's a, so much more going on here. I mean, I could probably make a 30, 45 minute video going through every one, single one of these, but the big ones are going to be your level stress, your levels stretch, luminance stretch, reduce background noise, enhance star color, their color boost, um, your nebula, nebula filter, and there's a strong version of that. Oh, let's do one more though. This screen mask invert. I used this earlier and I thought it was pretty cool what it did. Let's run through that one. I think it's a fairly quick plug-in. And enter, enter, enter. Should be about done. Hopefully. It's like a little spider right there. All right. <clears throat> See what we got. Okay, still going. That one's a little longer than I thought. But hey, still, this is easy peas. Okay, okay, okay. Looks like it's going to run this a few times. Wow, it's running the star reduction. I think my memory may be running a little low. <laughs> it's just taking a taking a moment here to save. Completing. There we go. Let's just. I'm not worried about saving a copy of that. Let's just look at the before and after. Eh, punched it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it just kind of. Maybe if I zoom in, you can. It just punches the detail a little bit more. Oh, let's not do that. Undo fill. Undo fill. Let's back out. There we go. Well, guys, there you go. Photo Kimmy Star Tools. I'd give it at least an 8 out of 10. Um, it's got some very powerful plugins here that pretty much automates image processing from a stacked image you're still going to want to use something like deep sky stacker or whatever program of choice to stack your data initially to get that single stacked image to work with but once you got that man just load up your your photoshop and this plug-in tools and uh there you go there you have it so awesome stuff that's really all i got to say about that well guys Hopefully this helps you out. If you're new to this game, you're new to this hobby, I think this is a great way to get started. However, don't underestimate the power of manual control. 
So if you're not totally comfortable with Photoshop, but you want a way to get some good results with your images that you've already started taking, I think this is a good way to go. I also think it's a good way for intermediate to more advanced users to take advantage of some of the tools that they have in here uh, that may perform better than the manual methods that you already know. So something to consider. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. God bless. You know, as always, I've got links in the description to gear, filters, accessories, stuff that can help you out, get you started on the right foot from retailers like Agena Astro and OPT Telescopes. And if you have any questions, concerns, or if you have any topics or ideas that you'd like me to talk about in, gen in the future, that you'd like me to discuss in the future, please post in the comment section. I'd be glad to, to address that as best I can. And until next time, clear skies, stay safe. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.